All right, folks, uh, Steve here with Guns and Tactics. Uh, I've had a request or two about how to rattle can a gun. Uh, I enjoy rattle canning and spray painting firearms uh, that I don't mind getting spray painted, uh, knocked around, dirty. I, most of my guns uh, that I use, I use them. They get banged up and they get paint on them. Who cares? We painted them in the military. I can still paint them now. Uh, and also, I think it... It kind of refreshes an old firearm, and for me personally, I like that. Uh, I like the fact that I can have a firearm that I haven't used in a long time, just sits in the safe potentially. I'm like, hey, why don't you just go throw a coat of paint on it, get it out to the range, knock the dust off of it, and you have kind of a brand new gun. And also a hit board. So today, what I want to do is I want to do a rattle can job on my ACR. Um, this ACR has been with me for quite some time. I don't use it as much as I probably should. I know there's a love-hate relationship out there with a lot of folks in ACRs. I personally like mine. Uh, I also have scars as well. But this is a fun little gun. I wanted to make sure that, uh, I don't know, just want to give a little refresh. So the first thing I did was I just took off the parts that I didn't want to paint. Uh, namely, an optic that I'll probably be putting on another gun at some point in time and the backup iron sights. I don't care so much about the furniture, like the, the foregrip here, uh, the charging handle, uh, or the stock for that matter. This, this particular grip doesn't come off on the ACR, so that's gonna stay. Uh, you'll notice the bolt carrier um, assembly is still in there. I'll tape that off, and I'll also tape off the muzzle device. Uh, you don't have to, but I would recommend plugging the barrel itself. Uh, and I'm also going to put a magazine in and paint the magazine in the gun, uh, just so it, it's got the same type of pattern. The colors I'm going to, I'm going to use today are going to be black from Rust-Oleum. Uh, I use this on a lot of my stuff. And then a gray. Now I was looking for a dark charcoal gray. This is as dark as I could find at like three different hardware stores. It's a satin granite. Okay, we're going to give it a shot. And if I don't like the way it looks, I'll just take the black and I'll just dust it to kind of darken it up a little bit. So again, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tape it off. I'm not going to bore you with how to tape things off. And then we'll pick back up uh, when I take it to the uh, I have a, little, I have a little garden shed that I like to hang stuff up in here and, and take it. Okay, so we're back. We're in the uh, shop right now. This is a small little shed I have that I keep garden equipment in. Um, what I've done is I hang them up with some wire. I'm not sure if you can see that. Let me go ahead and show that up there. So I just hang it up there with some wire. Make sure it's sturdy, make sure it's not going to fall off. Uh, you don't want your, your firearm to, you know, pull a Humpty Dumpty, right? So uh, you can see I have taped off the uh, muzzle device, in this case specifically because it is a host device uh, for a suppressor. It's got threads on it. But I'll be honest, a little bit of paint, a little bit of spray paint is probably not going to kill your firearm. And if it does, your firearm isn't worth much anyway just because it should function with a little bit of debris and dirt and stuff in it. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. I've also gone ahead and taped off the uh, the bolt area and the chain or the uh, ejection port area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to typically you can do it a couple of two ways. You can take and you can do a complete base coat. I don't degrease. I don't prime. I don't do anything like that. Uh, this particular pr uh, paint has got some primer in it, but typically I just use the camouflage paint that's just two times ultra cover, whatever that means. Anyway. So I don't do any of that stuff. I just basically tape off stuff I don't want to get ruined, and remove optics, whatever the case may be, and then hit it. So <clears throat> I'm going to try something a little bit new that uh, I actually learned from a Graham Thumb video. And I'm going to give that a shot where he likes to uh, basically do a base coat pattern first and then do the final pattern on top of that. Typically, again, I just normally do hit it all the way with one color probably three times to get three coats on it. But again, this is going to wear. Who really cares? So let's go and hit it. In this particular case, I'm going to go with the, the gray, the gray color. Uh, the reason I want to go with the gray color is I've always wanted to take this uh, ACR and kind of make it, I don't know, a little more maritime or who knows. So we're going to go ahead and hit it. And I'm going to go ahead and hit it and just do a few sections. And I'll rotate it and hit the other sections more. And I've already shaken up the can. It's coming out uh, a little chunky, but whatever, right? 
Okay. Again, if you're squeamish about painting a rifle, don't do it. Not that big of a deal though, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this side. Try to make it somewhat, I don't know, uniform. Get the magazine a little crazy. Now, the scheme I'm using is gonna be black and gray, so I don't really care so much about not getting the entire rifle, correct? So I'm just gonna kinda do the spots I wanna hit. Hit the top, get the bottom. Douche the magazine a little bit. All right, so there's some color on the rifle. In this particular case, I'm only using two colors, the black and the gray, and Hopefully my OCD doesn't kick in and try to make everything perfect. But I like to have uh, I like to have the the top and the bottom and the sides kind of wrap. So that's another reason why I do the magazine in there because I want when I put the magazine in, a it protects the portion of the magazine that goes into the rifle. It blocks the mag weld and you get that nice uniform coat. So. Uh, Trying to think if there's anything else I want to talk about at this point in time. I think I'm just going to go ahead and leave that as is. Now, yes, the rifle's black, but I'm going to use some black paint and just hit that as well, just to give it a little more feel, a little more uh, equal texture. And again, like Bob Ross, this is your world, this is your gun. Make it a happy little gun. Do what you want to do. And guess what? You can always fix it. All right? Yeah. Get your paint on. dry for a little bit because I'm whatever works with your eye right I'm gonna let this dry a little bit go get some dinner maybe hang out with the fam and then when I come back I'm going to go with I'm not gonna actually put on extra coats I'm going to uh, drink some whiskey and then go back and put my pattern on now the pattern that I use a lot of guys use this this was a bag, uh, it was a dive bag that I got back in the late 90s to uh, dive and get, and get shells. You can use a laundry bag, foliage, whatever you want to do. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this over here and then I'm going to hit it with the opposite color. Now, when I'm doing multicolor rifles, like so more than two colors, I will actually lay this down on the ground. Some people do it. I like doing either hanging or laying it down. If you lay it down and you flip it over, it may smudge a little bit. One thing I would also caution too is when you're doing this and you're laying it down, okay, don't pull it off right away. Now some guys can get away with it, but I found that if you do that and, you, and, you're, and your coat is too heavy, you will smudge your pattern. Again, it's paint, you can redo it, but, uh, but be careful. And also distance is gonna be your friend, right? You don't wanna be too close so it drips, but you don't want to be too far away so the color doesn't take and fill up the pattern. So we'll get to that when we get back. All right, folks, we're back. So what I want to do is I want to get the actual texture and on the on the rifle. And again, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the, an old dive bag that I. I kind of torn up. Um, it'd be kind of cool if you could just wrap the entire thing in a, in a bag and hit it up. But, uh, and I'm gonna do it hanging. I've done it both hanging and laying down on a bench out here. But let's go and hang. The nice thing about these bags, one, this one's got a handle, and two, it's got the mesh, right? So I can, I can actually take this and put it to the wire and the bag kind of stays. Now, I'm gonna move this bag around somewhat so I'm not too concerned about it, but what I want to do is I want to be able to hit it, 
have it stay in one place for a little bit and then remove it, okay? So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the black and I'm gonna hit this on the gray just to give a little bit of contrast. So, I know you guys can't see this side, but we'll, we'll flip it around, okay? So, I'm gonna get the pattern, I'm gonna kinda hold the pattern like this and I'm gonna hold it for a few minutes, not a minute, I'm sorry, a few seconds after I hit it up to get the color. I'm gonna hold the can uh, about 12 inches away. Kind of hold a little bit. Move on to the next part. Find the more find the gray. And again, this is your world, right? Do what you want. Slowly remove it. You kind of get the pattern that you're looking for. And if you don't, guess what? You can hit it again with another color. Okay, so right now I'm going to go ahead and hit this area down here. Almost hold the can. Try to get it as close to it as possible. If you need to tilt it, guess what? You have a third hand right here with, with it being hooked on to the, uh, the rafter here. So I can just kind of look at it and, and hit it. Do you, right? Just do you. It doesn't have to be a lot, but if you, if you do too much, you'll end up getting almost a solid color. If that's what you're looking for, great. I'm looking to have more of a breakup, so let's go ahead and see if I can get shot of this for you. I'm kind of losing light here. I'm going to go ahead and hang that back up. Try to get a shot here. Hold it for a couple secs. Try not to drop it. You can see it's starting to leave a mark there. Leave, leave a pattern. And that's what we're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and do I'm going to wrap it. Again, you can either let it sit sideways on a horizontal surface, or you can do it this way, up to you. Okay, see how it leaves the pattern? Okay, hopefully you can see that. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and sit here for a second, wrap it a little bit, hit it, call it good. Okay, so in my opinion, I'm getting a bit too much black. So what I'm gonna do is I'll probably let it dry a little bit, which takes a couple seconds actually, and then go and hit it again with some more gray on those places. But I still have to do the gray areas, I'm sorry, the black areas, with black, okay, or grays. I'm losing track of my colors, but you, you get the idea. It's not complicated. So, and you can just hit it up, little squirts. Do you? Again, I like to do the top two. No, you know you're probably gonna put optics or something on here. And, okay, but it gives it. Gives a little personality, right? You kind of see that? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do the glass gas block area. Okay. How am I liking that? You know, let me get a little more over here. Coming along, kind of get what I'm looking for. I'm gonna to move to gray now. And this is boring you, you can just fast forward and you can see the end, ending product, the end product, if I can speak. Since I probably need some more whiskey. All right, painting and drinking, right? This is honestly the only kind of painting I actually enjoy. I'm not a fan of painting really anything other than firearms. 
So we're gonna kind of just go about it and do a little shot here and a little shot there and another shot here. All right, <clears throat> coming along now. And sometimes I like just to do, you can either do strokes or you can do squirts. That was really bad, I'm sorry. <laughs> either way, you're gonna get a different result, right? So if you can hit up little individual parts or you can do general broader areas. So let's go here, let's go through here and hit this area up. Right now I have a few black areas that I wanna lighten up a little bit just with some texture. Um, my goal is to have texture everywhere, black or gray. So the, there should be texture everywhere in my, for my desire. You may only want a little bit of texture. Again, it's your happy little gun. Okay, so this area, see what it's starting to look like right now. Let's go ahead and switch to this guy. Now, because of the lighting, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the fire room. I'm going to rotate it on my hanging apparatus here, my scientific name for a nail and wire, and go ahead and hit up this side of the firearm. If I can get it to sit right. All right. This paint does dry pretty quick. Sweet. And that's the cool thing about, you know, in the military, what we would do is, you know, back in the day when we were wearing God's plaid, we would paint our guns whatever color we wanted, honestly. Um, farmers didn't really like it so much. That being said, uh, whatever environment was appropriate to where you're operating in, do that, you know. I live in a wooded area. So I am going with, uh, most of my guns have a wooded, pat a wooded pattern on them, whether it's, you know, FDE and Foliage Dream and, you know, Dark Earth. Um, this particular gun is gonna be different. I just wanted to do this. This is more of an urban gun. But again, you do what you want. pattern will also, depending on how it lays across the gun, if, if it's laying on the gun, you're going to have a nice distinct line. If it's laying away from the gun, you're going to have more of a, a blur. And that's one of the benefits or the reasons why I hang it on this one, because I don't want the entire pattern to look the same. So this is an odd, you know, it's got no structure to it really. So when I lay it down, some of it's going to be on top, the rest of it's going to be kind of loose. And so you get a different effect either way. Okay. I think we are looking pretty good. Let's see here. Get a little bit of gray here. You know, all we're looking to do is to break up the pattern of the gun. Hence the name camouflage. And to look cool for the ground. Not really. So, all right, I'm, gonna, I'm pretty happy with the sides. I'm gonna go, um, I'll even do the front of the magazine. Hit it up, found, found, found. Done. And I will do, how's my grip look? Apparently I lost you guys somewhere around the 10 minute mark. I have no idea where the camera to shut off. So what I've done is we've, we've done our base coat, we've done our texture, and now I'm kind of going back and seeing areas that I've missed and want to like touch up some more. And right now I'm feeling like there's too much gray. So I'm going to go in and add a little bit more black texture. Okay. And what I was saying is if you, if you move the, move the can, or not the can, the netting sideways, um, after you take it off, you're gonna smear. So try not to do that. And, all right, well. 
Remember how I said that the, uh, in my opinion, the gray was too light? So I'm gonna try something in a sec. to soften the gray. It doesn't look half bad, actually. Too much gray? Oh, I'm happy with that. All right, so, uh, with the black, I'm going to go and mist the gun. So, the point of that is just to, just to dull it a little bit so it's not so bright. I, I honestly, I wanted a more charcoal spray paint. This is the closest I get for. So I'm gonna stand pretty far back, don't spray the camera, and and dull down the pattern on the gun. In the gray area. Get your stretch on. And again, the light is over here, so I'm going to go ahead and rotate the rifle and do the same thing on this side. Just trying to add a little bit of black grain to it. Guess what? If I change my mind tomorrow, I can come back and I can redo it. This isn't hard, guys and gals. And guess what? <clears throat> as you use the rifle, as it wears on you and the terrain that you're in, as it gets shot, as it heats up and cools down, the color's going to change anyway. Alright kiddos, I think that's good for now, I'll let it dry and sit and I'll come back and I'll put it together and show you the final product. Morning folks, Steve here with Guns and Tactics. So the day after. Uh, we're here to look at our paint job. It's dried overnight. <clears throat> and again, this is a totally subjective. It's up to you uh, on what you're trying to accomplish, what you're trying to do with your particular firearm. But first and foremost, just have fun. And that's what I like to do. It's, it's, it's fun for me to do it. So without further ado, here she is. So, as you can see, the ACR is done for now. I mean, again, like I said yesterday, if you want to adjust it, feel free to adjust it. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and show you, move the coffee out of the way, kind of what we accomplished here. All right. So, you got a mix of gray, a mix of black. And in this particular light, it looks like there's probably more gray than black, but <clears throat> in reality, it's a decent, a decent mix. You can see the optics in the uh, backup sights I put back on. They're not painted. And uh, here's, the, here's the top of the, the gun. All right. Got a little action on the charging handle there. Remember, I taped off my muzzle device. <clears throat> now, when the paint first started coming out on the first hit of gray, it was like kind of lumpy, and you can, I'm not sure you can kind of see the, <clears throat> the texture there. Honestly, I don't care. It's almost like getting dirt rubbed into your gun. Um, and if you're not cool with that, uh, then don't do it. But <clears throat> anyway, this is what you see, this is what you get. And one thing I like to also do too is, you know, make sure everything works. Do a function check, if you, especially if you take apart your firearm and put it back together. Make sure you do a function check, make sure everything's working properly. Um, make sure it's charging properly, everything cycles fine, make sure it actually 
fires when you press the trigger and when you put the safety back on, nothing happens. Always maintain <clears throat> proper firearm safety, obviously. And so I'll also show you what it looks like with the magazine in. So you can see how the design flows from the gun to the magazine. And here's the other side. And that's the result you get when you put the magazine inside of the firearm when you paint it. Um, and you can see the front portion stays the same. Your magazine well stays clean. And the end result is a rattle canned gun. So I hope this was informative. This finds you well and healthy, especially in this odd time. But if you're bored staying at home and you can't get out for some reason and you have the ability to do a little arts and crafts project, I highly recommend it. It's fun. It's kind of a stress reliever. And you get to play with guns and paint. So take care, everybody. Happy Sunday.